Hello 3D printing friends! It's time once again for another Mod Mondays video on the BB3D channel and today we're going to be installing a bootloader on the Anet A8 3D printer with a version 1.5 mainboard and we're going to do it from a Mac. I'll talk a little bit more about what a bootloader is and why you may want to install one right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hey everyone, welcome back. Now before we get going, I wanted to say a couple of things. First, this video is part of a series covering the installation of the Clipper firmware on the ANET A8, so thanks to Mark Corliss of Corliss Media 2.0 for sponsoring this episode. And you can find out more about Clipper in the description below. And second, a huge thanks to all of you who subscribe to the channel. You know, it really means a lot to me to know that you like what I'm doing well enough to subscribe. And if you haven't subscribed yet but you'd like to, please click the subscribe button down there and also click that little bell to get notified when I release new stuff. All right. Onward. So what is a bootloader and why would you need one? Well, a bootloader is a tiny bit of code that runs at startup time on the microcontroller on your 3D printer's mainboard. That's the brain inside the printer. The job of a bootloader is to listen for a firmware update command on the mainboard's USB port and then accept the incoming data and write it to the microcontroller's flash memory. Now, many 3D printer control boards already have bootloaders installed, but some recent editions of the ANET version 1.5 control board may not, and so these only contain the printer's firmware. If that's the case with your printer, you won't be able to update the firmware via the USB port. You'll have to use a programmer board that plugs into a special programming connector on the main board to do it, and that programming board tends to kind of hang awkwardly off the programming connector, so it's not something you'd want to have in place full time. It's a lot easier to update the firmware using the printer's USB connector, and that's what the bootloader enables us to do. Now, a word of warning in big, red, capital letters. Installing a bootloader erases the existing firmware on the mainboard. I'm going to say that again. Installing a bootloader erases the existing firmware on the mainboard. In other words, when you install a bootloader on a mainboard, your printer will not function until you install firmware, either by reinstalling the original firmware or installing alternate firmware such as Marlin or Clipper. So your next stop after this video should be one of the videos linked in the description which covers firmware installation. Okay, with that out of the way, remember that programmer board I mentioned? We're still going to need one to get the bootloader onto the printer's mainboard. And the good news is they're really inexpensive and they're available on Amazon. They're known as a USB ASP board, and I have one here. Okay, so here's the USB ASP board. It has a USB connector on one side and a 10 pin connector on the other. It also includes a 10 pin ribbon cable that will plug between this connector here and the main board on the A8. Now, the A8, although it has a 10 pin connector, it uses a 6 pin programming interface, and this cable isn't going to have the signals going to the right place, so we need an adapter. Now, this programmer comes with an adapter to get the 10-pin signals down into the 6 pins that it needs to go to, but unfortunately, because the connector is still 10 pins wide on the A-net, this particular adapter won't fit because it doesn't have holes for the outer set of pins. So you can't physically plug this into the A-net. Now, what you could do is either cut this plastic down so that it'll fit, or you can just buy a board that has a slightly smaller connector on the 6-pin side. And that's what I did. So that's this board right here. So the ribbon cable plugs into this side, and then this side plugs into the center six pins on the 10-pin connector on the A8. Now, this ribbon cable isn't very long, so if you can't get the printer and the computer close enough together for the cables to reach, you may want a USB extension cable. Now, I had one laying around, but if you don't, Amazon's got you covered. So the hardware that we need for this operation will consist of the USB ASP programmer board, the 10-pin to 6-pin adapter, and an optional USB extension cable. And links for all of these are down in the description. Next, there's some software that we need to get. Don't worry, it's all free and links for it are down in the description. We need to install the Arduino IDE, or Integrated Development Environment, and we need the Skynet 3D ANET board definition file so that the IDE knows how to talk to the ANET control board. Okay, let's go over to the computer and get the software side of this set up. First, we'll download the Arduino IDE. Open a web browser and go to www.arduino.cc. Once there, point to Software, then click Downloads. That'll take you to the download page. Scroll down just a bit, and in the Download the Arduino IDE section, click the link for Mac OS X. 
You can choose to contribute a bit to promote Arduino software development, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to click just download. Once the software is downloaded, check your downloads folder. If your web browser automatically unzipped the download, you'll see the Arduino icon. If not, locate and double-click the Arduino zip file to unzip it. Let's move the Arduino software into the Applications folder. In the Finder, click the Go menu, then click Applications. This will open the Applications folder. Then, down in the dock, click the Downloads folder to view its contents. Drag the Arduino icon from there into the Applications folder. If you're prompted for administrator credentials, provide them. Now you have the Arduino IDE installed. Next, we need to launch the IDE, so double-click its icon. The first time you launch it, Mac OS may tell you that it's an application you downloaded from the internet and ask your permission to run it. If so, confirm that you do, in fact, want to open the Arduino IDE. As it launches, it'll create an Arduino folder inside your Documents folder. Once the Arduino IDE is fully loaded, we'll quit it. We only launched it so that it would create that folder. Now open your Documents folder, and then locate the Arduino folder and open it. It won't have much in it, but that's okay. We're going to put something inside it in just a moment. That something is the board definition file, so that the Arduino IDE knows how to communicate with the ANET board. Open a web browser and go to github.com slash skynet3d slash anet dash board. Once you're there, click the Clone or Download button, then click Download Zip. When this has finished downloading, open your Downloads folder. If your web browser automatically unzipped the download, you'll see the ANET Board Master folder. If not, look for the ANET Board Master zip file and unzip it. Open the ANET Board Master folder. Drag the Hardware folder from there into the Arduino folder that lives inside your Documents folder. If your Arduino folder already has a Hardware folder, Mac OS will ask if you want to replace the existing one or merge them. Tell it that you want to merge. Well, okay, now we've got the software pieces where they need to be, so let's start working on the hardware. The first thing we need to do is remove power from the printer, so turn the printer off and unplug it. If you have anything plugged into the main board's USB port, unplug it. Plug the USB ASP AVR programmer into your computer. This ribbon cable is short, so I had to use a USB extension cable to be able to reach the printer. Next, plug the 10-pin to 6-pin adapter onto the end of the programmer's 10-pin ribbon cable. Now, plug the 6-pin side of that adapter into the open 10-pin connector on the main board. You'll plug into the middle 6 pins, leaving 2 pins above and 2 pins below the adapter. Make sure it's oriented so that the red stripe on the ribbon cable is toward the bottom. This will provide power to the board, and the LCD will light up and display its usual information. Okay, the hardware is ready to go, so let's launch the Arduino IDE. We need to tell the IDE to make use of the ANET board file, so click the Tools menu, go to Board, and down at the bottom, pick the ANET V1.0 board. Now we need to tell the IDE that we want to use our programmer board. So click the Tools menu, go to Programmer, and select USB ASP from the list. Okay, so at this point, everything is in place for us to be able to burn a bootloader onto the ANET's main board. Now remember, once you burn a bootloader onto the board, that's the only thing that'll be on it. It won't be able to operate as a printer until you load some firmware onto it. So this is your last chance to bail out. Still with me? Okay, here we go. Click the Tools menu, then down at the bottom, click Burn Bootloader. This only takes a couple of seconds. And it's done. And you can safely ignore these warnings down here. You'll notice that the LCD might be in a weird state, and that's because the only thing on the main board is the bootloader. The bootloader's job is to receive new firmware. It doesn't know how to talk to the LCD. Well, with that, you're ready to proceed to the next stage, which is to say, actually installing firmware. And because we now have a bootloader installed, you can unplug that collection of extension cables, programmers, and adapters. From now on, you'll be able to install firmware by plugging a USB cable between your printer's main board and your computer's USB port. 
Now check the description for links to the firmware installation videos as well as links to the AVR programmer and the adapters that you may need from Amazon. And that's the end of the video. If you liked this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But either way, please leave your thoughts down in the comments. If you like the content that I'm producing, please consider supporting the channel with a one-time micropayment. You could buy me a coffee or leave a little something in the PayPal tip jar. Links for both of those are down in the description as well. Now that my printer has a bootloader installed, it's time to install some firmware. And after I do that, I can print something cool. You do the same and I'll see you next time.